Okay, so this is just sort of a big picture overview of how you will go about initially developing your course Google site kind of overall shell where you're going to end up putting all your projects for the course. So here I am on our course website and I am going to go to the first project that you need to do other than your About Me page. Um, your About Me page is going to be something you actually put in your Google site that you're going to make. So here I am on the course web page that explains a little bit about what pages I need to make initially and I'm going to copy that just for now so I can remember. I'll copy it and I will paste it into my text program so that I could refer back to this. These are the pages that initial pages I need to make in my course website an about me page and uh, the case study class that that you'll be using throughout the semester and a menu page for your instruction Im improvement projects etc. Okay so I'm at this site and now I'm going to walk you through now that I know how, what pages I need to make I'm going to uh, go to uh, create a Google site and whoops I'm gonna go here the website is on the project page it's just sites.google.com and this is where you're going to create a Google site now in order to do this you need to log in with a Google account and if you have a Gmail account that's the account that also logs into Google if not you'll need to create your own uh, Google account first so if you've never created a Google site before you're not going to have anything listed here um, I'm, I've created many in, in the past, so I'm going to click on the Create button. And when you get to this page, you have a couple of initial options. Um, select a template to use is the first option. And f what's best for this class initially is not to click on the Classroom Site template or any of the others. It's just to click on a blank template. You can always change this later. But initially, you're going to want to keep your overall design as simple as possible. And so then you need to type a name for your site. And I will just type in EDET454 sample as my website. And down below, it will, it will automatically create the, the web address for it. And it will tell you if there's a problem, if somebody already has it. Um, it could be anything that you want, though. Um, should make it probably something related to the class so that it makes sense to you. I clicked on the I am not a robot um, option. I am not a robot. Uh, I wonder if it heard that. And then I'm going to click on the Create button. So it should, if everything works out well, it should create my initial website. And it there it is. It starts off very simple and one page is what it starts off as. And when I go back to my list of pages, these are the main pages that I want to make sure become part of the menu. Actually, I have pages and then I have a link back to the course web page that also needs to be included in my main menu. So these things need to be in my main menu. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a page and I'm going to call it about me because that's one of the first oops don't know why that happened I mean it's one of the first things you have to do about me and I'm going to create it and you'll notice when it creates this blank page that this is the about me page and it also shows up in my menu over here um, at a later time if you don't discover it in advance I'll show you how to arrange the menu on the left in order to be exactly what you want it to be and to look exactly how you want it to look. But for now, I created an About Me page. And this is the page where you're going to include some specific information about yourself as well as embed a Google Earth tour um, so that we can learn a little bit more about where you're from and where you learned how to do some important things. So that's going to go on this page. Uh, I'll just click Save for now. And I didn't make any changes to it. I'm also going to create another page remind myself what it is case study class okay so I'm going to create another page called case study class I'll create that and it will also then show up 
on my menu um, on the left. Whoops, I guess I didn't click create uh, emphatically enough, but I did there. So this is going to be my case study class page. I'll click save. The last thing that I want to do is create uh, not a page, but just a website uh, link, a link back to the course website. So I'm actually going to go back to the course website. I'll click on the home and I'll copy. You can't see this, but I'm copying the web address to the course. I'm going to go back to the um, back to the sample website. Um, I am going to click on create a page. And then it says, because I just want this to be a link and not an actual page, I'm, it says select a template to use. And I'm going to click on web page announcement file and cabinet list. And I actually don't want any of those. I just want a link. So let me just quickly show you how to do that. I'll cancel out of creating a new page. And again, I'm going to go kind of fast here. But if you need help with this, just go to the, uh, the help resources that are linked from the course project uh, website. I'm going to go to edit site layout and I'm going to edit the sidebar navigation right here. Notice that I have a couple of things selected. I have automatically organized my navigation. If you keep that checked, then what it will do is make sure that every time you create a new page, it just throws it over there on the left hand menu unorganized. Eventually, you're going to uncheck that box, but initially you can keep it checked. Um, I'm going to click on um, OK, and I, I want to actually edit a sidebar item. So I'm going to click on, oops, cancel that. Oh, navigation. I'm going to click on the new. Um, let's try that one. Cancel that. OK. Oh, in order to, I remember now, in order to accomplish this, I actually have to deselect the automatically organize my navigation. So this is where I actually select what pages I want to show in my navigation. So I'll go back and add the page, a page. Notice that um, it lists the ones that I've made. Uh, I'll keep home as the first page. That'll bring me back to my main, uh, my main home page. I'll click on the About Me page as the second one. I'll click on the Case Study class as my third one. Notice that I have some options over here in order to rearrange where they are in the menu. Um, but I'm going to keep them like this for now. Um, and then instead of adding a page, I'm going to add a URL. And for the text to display, I'm going to type in um, um, course website. And the URL, I'm going to paste what I had copied, which is the link back to the course Weebly website. And I'll go ahead and open it in a new window so that when you need to go back to the course website, you won't actually leave your other website. It'll just open up a new, a new window or a new tab. Click on OK. Click on OK. And now you will notice on the left, oh, I'll close it. And on the left now, if I click on course website, it will navigate me in a new window back or a new tab back to the course website. So that's what you're going to need to do for during week one in order to develop your course shell and then also provide a place for you to um, include information about yourself on the About Me page. And details for this are on the project uh, web page uh, specifications site. So that's it. I know I went through a lot of this very quickly. What you're going to want to do is um, is go through the directions on the project web page and then go to the Google help site if you need help um, fixing something. And if something doesn't work, you can't seem to find an answer, please feel free to contact me via email or phone and I'll be happy to uh, walk you through. Or um, we can arrange a time to meet either in the lab or my office um, at a time that's convenient for you in order to walk through some of this stuff. Some students need that kind of support early in the course, and I'm happy to, happy to oblige.